Jazz is in the house. That's gonna, I'm just going to do that all day. How many times did you have to do that for the for the pose? Or did, was that something that you did? I was sitting there making faces, and they were like, come on, you're really angry at each other. And I was screaming. I was like, ah! And they were like, it's a photo shoot. It's not actually live. I was like, I know it's a photo shoot. The photographer was like, no, he gets it. Yeah, He's exactly. doing it right. The photographer was like, keep doing it. Joe so, Billion, season two. Yes. How's it going? Well, uh, you mean as a fan? Yeah. Yeah, I love watching. Saturday, Sunday night, you know? <laughs> It's fantastic. Are you good? You, you're you're good watching yourself. Like you can handle watching your own scenes and stuff. I mean, it's terrible. Who wants to see themselves? Do you like watching yourself? I have never watched a single one of. In, in, in You've never watched this. If someone puts it on for me, I will be I will be like, stop it. Yeah, it's terrible. Sometimes they're isn't editing it? it next to me, and I'll hear my voice, Ooh, and I'll be like, what a worst, nightmare. Right? Shut that person up. Yeah, yeah. Who's I'm that so disgusting, sorry. terrible voice? Yeah, me too. Are you really? Oh yeah, it's awful. But I I do it every week. I'm there. I'm just like bearing through it. I've learned to tolerate myself. You, do you? Can you learn to tolerate yourself? I mean, uh, years of right. therapy are I'm getting there. You don't I'm have to like there. it. You don't have to dislike it. Just Toleration. tolerate it. I got it. It's an, it's an acting I lesson. It. I had a great acting teacher who actually it was one of those things where, where you, you know, when you're up there and you're learning how to act, even when you're just doing it professionally and you're sucking. Um, you just have to learn to tolerate the fact that you suck. Really? Yeah, you embrace your own inadequacy. How did that work when you're... Just when in a tolerant way. You tolerate the fact that, like, I am inadequate. I am trying to do something. I'm not doing it. I will be tolerant of how inadequate I am. How does that come across in an acting class, though? Are you like, oh, you're sucking up there right now. Let me teach you how to tolerate this. I mean, you know, because when, when actors get up, when, when actors go up and they try to do something and they're just like, I can't believe I, I, I try to do this and I, I, I suck, I suck. And you're like, okay, hold on, everybody slow down. Because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, masochists and sadists in the acting world. Um, because you're ende endeavoring to do something that you have a great hope for and you, you, you know that if it's a great writer, they've written something beautiful and you want to achieve it. But... If you don't, you realize it very quickly that you're not. And so it's an immediate feedback loop, right? You don't even need somebody to tell you how that poor you're doing. You just don't feel it a lot, a yeah, lot of the time. it's just not happening. And you're just like, you feel sad and angry and ashamed and, you know, keep going down the list. <laughs> Good go. So the scene that we just saw of Wags, a fairly tame scene compared to a lot of, the, a lot of what we see Wags doing That's on true. the show. That's true, isn't how it? How much fun is this character for you? It's probably too much fun. It's probably too much fun. I feel like we've we've never really got. We you've played some kind of iconic characters from from cable drama. Oh I would really? Say, be the managing editor from The Wire. Oh hello. Gail from Breaking Bad. Oh yeah, you know? I was in that one. That was a good TV show. Both good TV shows. Both great TV shows. Yeah. But neither of those characters are really wild guys. They're not really. No, they're you know. not. But you know, even though they each get to do something, uh, you know. They, they got to they got to they got to live a little. They got to live in their own particular <laughs> constrained ways. Wags is just taking the top off. He just realized he could take the top off, and while he took the top off, nothing really bad is going to happen to him. You I mean, bad stuff happens to him. But. You can't say that Gail Boddicker got to live a little without immediately conjuring up the music video. I mean, that's how yeah. Gail got to live. It's sure, immediately yeah. there. Yeah, he is. liked he liked he liked song. He loved song, <laughs> and puttering around his house. He did. He liked it. So he did Wags, not like getting shot in the face. No. Spoiler alert. For <laughs> those the, who haven't seen the <laughs> TV One person show. here who's like halfway through the They're like, wait season. a second, no. <laughs> he gets killed. So with Wax, when they cast you to play this part on Billions, you know, what did they tell you? What had they seen that you were in? How did they know that this was could totally in your wheelhouse? Because you're incredible in this character. Well, thank you very much. Um, Brian Koppelman and I had gone to college together. Uh, who's one of the executive producers of the show and one of the creators of the show. So he had known, we had known each other for a long time. Um, and he had kept watching my career go on. And then I had done a movie of theirs called Solitary Man. And you were in Runner, Runner, which they wrote. And then wrote, I was in Runner, right? Runner, which they wrote. And um, so I, I was in movies of theirs, so they knew what I did. And um, uh, so it, it was, it was, they, they also knew the, the many different things that I could do. So in, initially they had envisioned that Wags was a, the sort of strong silent type. He was from the Upper East Side. He was, you know, the, the, the quiet fixer, the, the person who was always going to be, you know, letting acts run wild and he was there to clean up the mess. And then they decided somewhere 
as they were editing the the pilot and we were going to go to series that they wanted to sort of flip the yeah. flip the that's is kind of the strong silent yeah, type yeah exactly and i get to be the wild man so when we first came back and did the second episode it just we sort of we mostly cut me from the pilot and then i sort of come back and have the twisty mustache and i'm ready to go what did they what did they tell you about him when you came back for the second season were they like we flipped the characters and Basically, you're going to be do totally it, just bonkers. go for it just like just go go nuts and I think, and, and there was something that was, it's, it, as I sort of, and we were finding it together as we were on set and sort of going forward, he, he, um, he, fires, he fires this character who we saw this past week come back. Um, forget his name, the character's name. Um, anybody? Mike? Mike, that was his name? No. Victor, nice, who was that? Gold star. It was Victor. So Victor, Victor, who is this really? He's a fantastic actor, the guy who plays Victor, and he, and he is a really big guy. And he gets fired and Axe, you know, shames him and throws him out. And Victor sort of advances on um, Axe, and I'm much smaller than Victor. And so I just started like get in his mug. He was just like, let's go, let's you and me. I'll eat you. And they were like, they were like, oh yeah, that's fun. And I was like, oh yeah, that's fun. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna pretend to eat this other actor, that's gonna be fun. So then I was like, oh yeah, maybe he want, he'll just like, I'll do anything. I'll eat you. I'll eat, I actually will eat you. This must be so amazing. This must be amazing yeah. for you. It goes back to that, right? Makes sense. He'll eat anybody. Every, every, every shoot day must be so much fun for oh, you at this point. Oh, it's incredibly fun. Although when you get very tired and you really got to be shouty and obnoxious and just mean, um, it can be a little, it's a little taxing. Although once you get into it, once you break that sweat, I, you know, you live in New York City. Who isn't angry? Everybody's angry. It's so easy. I feel like you've, you've played a lot of restrained characters for some reason. Where, where do you think people uh, saw you as like a restrained actor rather than a, kind of, a, a wild man? Well, I can do it all. Uh, look at that, <laughs> look at that. Uh, sorry, that was just a, no, that, that was just, immodest of me. I kind of gave I, it no, to it you. Was just, it was, you know, these guys also knew that I had that in me, that I, there was a, a much wilder sort of, I had, I had originally started in comedy. They saw was, your college days. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had originally done comedy, so I was mostly doing comedy, and I'd never really done dramas, and then I started, and, and I mostly was, you know, ineffectual bureaucrats and losers. Um, and and it wasn't until a friend of mine cast me in Damages where I played uh, a sort of a sociopath, where I got to kill people, which is so much fun. Oh, man. Having been killed and kill, it's much more fun to kill people. It's so much more fun to shoot people. Speaking of ineffectual bureaucrats, I stumbled upon 13 Hours a few months ago, oh, yeah. where you played the ineffectual bureaucrat CIA yeah, agent. Glory days, yeah. Still and, bringing that one back. In Benghazi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was it like shooting that movie with Michael Bay? I've heard he's a bit of a tyrant on the set. Well, yes. <laughs> Michael, if you're watching, yes. Yes. Um, he would say that too, for sure. Uh, I think he owns it. I, I think I saw a picture of him oh, in a magazine yeah. one time with tigers and like yeah, guns around. Sure, him. sure, sure. Michael owns it. I will tell. I will tell you that it was. It was. A, it was. A, it was challenging. Um, he can really blow things up perfectly. The people who work for him and blow stuff up, they are spectacular. <laughs> they were. They were at one point. At one point, it really is awesome because it's so terrifying. I had to do this own stunt, my own stunt. At one point, the the place where the CIA is got got hit by a mortar, and so like the you know there was one shot where they had loaded the ceiling with stuff, and I have to come in, and then it explodes right over my head, and then I fall down, and I have to scream into the walkie-talkie, um, and. And he was, no, can I curse? I can't curse. I can. I can curse. So, so and if you're going to talk about Michael Bay on set, please curse. I mean, curse come on. You, yeah. I mean, if you've ever seen a Michael Bay movie, you fucking know that it's a lot of cursing. <laughs> so, Bay, so Bay looks at me and he was like, so it's, it's this big long scene and it's a big room. It's bigger than this. And Bay says, he's like, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. And I'm like, I'm not going to fuck it up. So, right. And he says, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. And I was like, dude, just fucking roll the camera and I'm going to fucking do it. And so, and so. We do this, and then there's a big pause, and we get he and I, and and basic, basically that was our relationship. He yelled at me one day, and I did the very first day I was there, and I was like, I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I and no one had said like, oh by the way, he's gonna shout at you. And that means of directing is to yell at you. Yeah, okay. he's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? No, don't do that. And it was like, what what you didn't tell me what? And I just I just st stood there, and then the next day I got to work, and he and then I I shouted at him, and he was like he was like. That's funny. You got mad. And I was like, yeah, 
I did get mad. And he was like, that was funny. <laughs> so then that we were like best buds every time. And every time I see him, he would be like, if, you were, if, if Bay walked in now, he'd be like, shut the fuck up. I'd be like, you shut the fuck up. I've got the microphone. He, that's, that's our relationship. And he's very fun in that way. Once you, once you get through, once you break through that skin of, of having to shout at each other, it's all good. Did you have to alert any other actors on set that that no, was the way to break through? No, because none of the actors had done that to me. And I was like, why didn't you guys just say something? You didn't tell me that he was going to shout at me. They're like, sorry, man, it happens to everybody. I was like, great, great. Really? You're not going to actually just, the guy who walks in, you guys have been getting shouted at for a week, and then you didn't tell me, like, oh, by the way, he's going to not tell you what to do. Expect for you to know what he wants. When you don't do it, he's going to shout at you in front of 200 people. They didn't Does do that. that help your performance? No. <laughs> Well, I don't Until know I learned okay. how to shout back. So he, sh so, so then they blow this thing. So we get to the point when he and I are arguing, and we finally do this thing, and it was, it was the loudest. So I have to fall down, and there's like a camera. I have to hit my mark right here, right? And the stuff's falling on me, and it's just loud, and like there's smoke, and you're choking, and you're like coughing, and it's awful. And it's, it was so loud. It was so loud that it was, and they, the, the, the stunt guy was like, don't turn back to look at it. He was like, because it's going to be really bright. So don't look at it. Just look forward. So I have to like come into the frame, and, I'm, and it's like a second on film. It's not even, you wouldn't even notice it in the movie. So I come in, and, and this, it, 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 and I have to fall. And he was like, you got to fall, dude. Got to make sure you fall. And, and I'm Does telling Michael you. Michael Bay use dude that much? Is oh, that yeah. We just say dude to each other. Was, I was like, dude, I got it. I got it, dude. So then, so it was so loud, I could feel the outline of my heart in my body. Like, my heart was like, thunk, and I just like, boom, I hit the deck so fast, I beat the cameraman, who knew that it was, and everybody was coming. And so, and so, and so, and you're, and I was like coughing, almost puked, and because I was just like dying from, from inhaling all this smoke, and shouting and shouting into my, into the, into the walkie-talkie, and doing the scene, and so, and you had to keep doing it over and over and over. You couldn't do the explosion, but once, and, um, and so I'm like lying on the ground and the stunt guy comes and he steps on my ankle and I scream. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. And, 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 and Bay is like where you are and he's got a camera too because he's always shooting. He always got the cameras. That's all he wants to do is like shoot. So he goes, he's like, I love it. And he like takes the camera and he jams it in my face and I'm like, ah. And he's like, I love it. And so then he, then we would, he would rewatch that scene every day at, that when we were on set. He's like, this is so funny. Watch. It's like you're an, like you're an animated cartoon. Somebody hits you on the head with a hammer and he was like, play it back, play it back. And you go, boom. And I just go, boom. And he's like, ha, ah. ha, ha. Is it fair to say that Michael Bay directing the movie is like a person with a machine gun just consistently going, ah! Yes, yes, exactly. Like everything he does is a version of that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about the I'm hair... I'm sweating. I'm sweating talking about Michael Bay. I didn't know that we were going to do Bay today. I'm, so, I'm sorry. It could I, go I, on for hours. That could happen for hours. How much time do how we, much time have? we have? <laughs> Please, God, I would love more oh, Bay stories. So many more Bay stories. That wasn't the first time you met him when he started screaming at you on set, was it? No, I had met him once before in L.A. Right. When we read through the scenes. And he doesn't. He wasn't yelling then. It was just sort of when you got to set that day. That's when he. He that's did when not he yell crazy. then. But I will tell you, there was this great Hollywood moment. And I think you guys will appreciate this because I couldn't. It would. It took my breath away. It was one of those things where you would actually, if you saw it in a movie, you'd be like, "Well, that doesn't happen. That's just stupid. Nobody does that." So we were all sitting around a table, and all, it was all the guys, and they had just gotten back from basic training, and me and Bay, and Bay has these two giant dogs, right? And at one point, so we were reading through the scenes, and all of a sudden, just the door opens, and these two, just giant bull mastiffs come into the room and you're like what the what the hell is going on aren't we supposed to be working and then and so the two dogs come in and you're like oh and you stop working because there are two giant dogs in the room now and and then and then somebody just walks opens the door and says does anybody want chocolate cake and so Bay's like who wants chocolate cake and I was like we don't no we're working no we're not gonna eat chocolate cake what time is no we're not gonna have chocolate it would be somebody do we want chocolate cake and then Bay's like, I'll have chocolate cake. And so then he just starts eating chocolate cake and the dogs are there. I was like, this is. <laughs> Walked into a Monk Michael Bay, an insane parody of a Michael Bay movie. You're like, I want to talk about my character. Yeah, exactly. He's like, no, well, I got we, Mastiffs and chocolate, chocolate cake. cake. It's the chocolate cake and dog time now. You're like, okay, <laughs> guess it is. 
Uh, let's talk about the Harry Ape, which you've been doing at the Park Avenue Armory for the last uh, two months, really? Uh, Three yeah, we've been rehearsing and then and then performing now for about two months. The Eugene O'Neill play, it's yep. you and Bobby Cannavale, yep. and Becky and Baker. Yep. I got to see it a few weeks ago. Unbelievable production. Thank you. Absolutely incredible. Uh, you sing, you dance in it, you wear masks. I do. It's an yeah. incredible production. Speaking an Irish accent. Yeah. I cover myself in dirt. That's why my hands are dirty. You see that? We're all covered in dirt the whole day. Oh, that's right, in the beginning of the play. Yeah, I it doesn't actually, come off, really. I actually read, how familiar I mean, were... I showered today. <laughs> I did. How familiar were you with the original text before you uh, jumped into the play? It was one of those, I had read it in college, not understood a word of it, and just sort of felt perplexed by it and... You know, just I have no idea what this is all about, and so going back and rereading it, and and then, and still feeling somewhat distressed by how difficult it is, but also knowing now, and you're like, oh, okay, now I understand what the play is about, um, and I knew that the director was going to make something incredible, and I had been in the Park Avenue Armory before, so I knew the space was going to be really like something you've never seen before, and it really is like you. I mean, you 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 saw it. It's something. If you come, there's only three more nights left, but um, it is a, it's an incredibly beautiful, it's a giant, you know, the building is a block, is a city block in length and width. And it's an incredible, incredible space. And it really is like, it's one of those, this production of this play will, you'll never see it in our lifetime again. The play itself for the actors, I mean, I think specifically for you and Bobby and, and maybe a number of the other actors as well, it feels like a, a physical challenge a yeah, lot of the time. There's a lot of physical movement yeah. and running around and And, and, and what Bobby does is incredible. He, it's a basically 90 minutes. He doesn't ever stop talking or moving. He's on every scene. He is, except for one. And he's not and like a quiet, reserved character no, either. No. He's big he's and yelling. A hairy ape. Yeah, he's a hairy ape. <laughs> um, and he re it really is. It's something that seeing him perform that part, which is unlike, there are very, very few actors, I think, that could do that in the history since O'Neill wrote it. And I think Bobby is, it's, it's like it's in his blood. You know, the, the, if you read it now, if you go back and read it, all of it's, it's all written in dialect. So it's, you know, that she done, that Skoit has done me doit. So Skoit is S-K-O-I-T and doit is D-O-I-T. You know, and to, to have somebody who makes that, that part of old New York, you know, 1920s New York come alive and really feel, you kind of feel, no matter how, distant you are from the 1920s, and most of us are quite distant from it, it feels present. It doesn't feel like he's putting on an accent. It doesn't feel like he's talking in a dialect, an old New York dialect, you know? It really feels like, oh, there's that guy. He's really, he means it. Yeah. It's, such a, it's such a surreal play as well. I, I didn't know Eugene O'Neill for being that much of a, I don't think he was a surrealist, but any well, a he surreal was, writer at he, all. Well, he was an express at that, at that point in his career. He was an expressionist writer, and he was somebody who who loved Sprit Strindberg, and uh, it was and he really also kept trying to change the form of American theater. So everything, everything, all of the you know, we look at his later writings, "Long Day's Journey into Night," um, uh, "Morning Becomes Electra," but the 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 plays. Uh, that we identify with more like psychological realism and, and um, this was not that. And it would have been something for American theater then that was groundbreaking. It was, a, it was, it was I thought an absolutely I saw... groundbreaking play then. And because most of what was happening then, certainly on Broadway, was, you know, drawing room comedies, things that were really typical commercial. There was no... There was no larger political or societal idea around what they were making, and he was really deeply interested in that. Like 1921? 1922, Tw I think. 21, 22, yeah. I mean, I thought what I saw at the Park Avenue Army was also fairly groundbreaking for, for now, taking that text and reworking it into something that yeah. felt specific to now, as, as not just historical or caught in its time and place, but a work of art made right now. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's incredible how enduring the, the writing is, that it lives up, it can, it can sustain itself from the 20s until now and be just as certainly relevant and present. You know what I mean? It really feels like it's alive, it's happening. We're not doing a museum piece. <laughs> that's no, that's sure. good. It yeah. feels alive, yeah, yeah as you that's... said. Uh, about billions, one thing I want to ask you. Paul Giamatti is the character in this that I don't think anybody goes up to and says, I, I want to be like your character. I want to. I want to be. I want to be the cop, or the lawyer, if you will. I want to be the lawyer, if you will. That's busting the titans of finance. 
but your character and Damian Lewis's character, people approach and say, I want to be the That's corrupt true. titans of finance. Kind of, yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to be the robber? That's true. You want to be the robber. It's more fun to be chased than be the guy chasing you. That's true. Although Paul gets to do plenty of very interesting things. Yeah. I mean, he gets peed on in the very, very beginning. I mean... Do you wish, do you wish that your character was getting peed on, too? Do you... I mean, I think if, you... no, I think there's room for everybody to, you know, everybody, sh everybody should get a taste of depravity, so if Paul should have some, Paul should have some, why not? Well, let's get some questions from the audience here. Who's got a oh. question? Right, right here. Thank you so much for coming. You have one of the best characters on television, so I'm going to try to do the impossible and ask Wags a question and not get cussed out in the response back. Um, do you it takes think a lot of energy, you realize, for me to do that. <laughs> do you think Wag sees himself somewhat as a father figure to his staff or more of kind of the anti-corporate counselor to Wendy Rhodes? I think, uh, I, I think Wags' parenting style is um, suspect. Uh, I, do think, I, I do think that he, he's more of a... Um, you know, he's, his, his feeling, I think, would be that he, he, he feels that the way to learn is that if he, I'm going to kick you out of the nest and you're going to learn to fly on your way down to your death. Um, and I think he would feel like that that's, that makes sense. You're either going to fly or you're not, and if you don't, fuck you. Who gives a shit? You shouldn't have been here in the first, you shouldn't have been in my goddamn nest in the first place. Um, Tough love without that much of the love. Yeah, really very little love. Although he knows he needs to kick them out of the nest, so he's like, get, get the fuck out of here. And I think that, I, I think one of the, the main, his main style is that he wants to keep people off balance, right? And he wants everybody to always be imbalanced. Just when they think that they've got his number, he pulls it the other way. And they're like, I didn't know that you could go that way. And it's like, yeah. Next question. Hi. I've seen you in, uh... On, I've seen you in suits, and I've now see you in, in uh, billions as wags. And I can't say you were one of my favorite characters in suits, uh, but is thank you. I <laughs> it's you, you are, can't say going. I can't no, no, say. No, 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 no. In fact, you let's know, go back to some of your worst work. No, no, no. I hated you in Low Winter Sun. God damn no. it! I think the character was necessary, but I like you more in as wags. Okay, fair billions. enough. Um, if you yeah, had you know, to choose the between those two characters, which one do you think more represents David? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, yeah, uh, I don't think either one really represents me. I think, you know, I have a, um, I have an impish interior. I like to be, um, uh, I like uh, I like breaking rules certainly not big ones just small ones um, so I think that both Daniel and and Wags enjoys uh, not playing by the rules and I think that I think that's fun um, I mean I play by the rules I'm sitting still here I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna knock that over I'm not gonna do something ridiculous I wasn't waiting for you to no, break no, okay, the rule okay. I thought I you were just like I was just I was. I just felt a little admonishment. I was like, I'm not going to do. I mean, I'm still. I asked. Understood what you were saying. That's could, an anecdote. I, I didn't asked think. if I could curse even before I did it. So that is true. You know, that tough guy. I'm not rule that big of a rule fucking rule breaker. <laughs> Fuck you. I would love it more than you if you did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we have time for one more question right here. Hey, how you doing, David? Good. Uh, uh, Michael, I'm a student at Lee Strasberg. Uh, nice. I had an opportunity to work on season two, episode three, Alpha Cup. Nice. I had a poker player. It was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, I wanted long, to, those were long days. It was long days, right? It was so crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the work was amazing. So um, I wanted to ask you, in this last latest episode, you get into it with uh, Dollar Bill. And uh, you guys are having that argument right at the batting cage. And I was wondering if you used an emotional memory or how you got to where you got in that scene. I mean... It was, it was really draining. You came at him really hard, just one, two, and got there. It was one of what made it click as an actor from an acting standpoint. I guess um, that is, that it's not something that I, um, that particular technique is not something that I use or, 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 or have been trained in. Um, so it's, it, it isn't uh, something that I would aspire to in that moment, but it is when you, are, when you find some, when you find another actor who is, willing to sort of jump off the cliff with you together at that same moment and um, 
be as uh, confrontational and upset with each other as he and I were. You know, Kelly and I actually were weirdly um, roommates in uh, like our junior year abroad in college. So we've known each other for years, but have never worked together until now. Um, so there's plenty, there's, there's plenty of unknown history that could be there, but it isn't something necessarily that, that either one of us looked for or spoke about in order to get to that place. I think, again, the, the natural metabolic rate of where Wags lives is that he's very close to and very eager to, to enjoy that aspect of his life, confrontation, um, aggression, uh, so that there isn't any, you know, sometimes as an actor, I'm sure that you, you get to a scene and you, you see it coming, you see that, that moment coming and you feel like, oh, I've got to ramp up to this. I feel like, um, uh, as a, I was an acting teacher and have been a teacher for a while, so I'll speak, I'll, I'll just now talk to you like an acting teacher. I think one of the, I think my feeling is that personal joy is the thing that is going to to allow you to open that door. You know that scene in um, The Matrix when he goes to find the, 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 the oracle, right? He's in the room with all the doors and he has to sit and, and he's like, you'll know which one it is. And so he just knows. My, my feeling about getting to any difficult position, place emotionally or in a scene that you, that you may not have access to or you're hoping you have access to, it's more about seeing if you just open the door and allow that particular thing to, to fill you up or to fill that moment up. And I, the, the key is that, that there is a sense of joy about it. And for WAGs, confrontation and anger and rage are something that brings him great joy that he actually really has a blast doing. And for David, there is something that, that is very powerful and fun. I don't spend my life expressing my rage. I have plenty of it. Um, I live in New York City. I ride the subway. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so, it's, so it's, if, if there is a way of, of transforming it, it's actually about the transformation of something that is potentially very negative into something that actually can bring you great joy. And in that, you can find an almost instantaneous embrace of it because it's joyful, because joy is something that happens to you. It isn't something that you seek. You seek happiness or you seek things that you like, but joy just springs out of you, right? It springs, that brings me joy. The New York Times, holding the New York Times brings me, David, joy. I love it. It gives me joy. I hold it in my hands. And I think, look at all the people who work so hard for me every day. And then they write, write. They work so hard. They travel all over the world and make their whole lives insecure in order to write what they write. And it comes to my door every day. It brings me joy. So anyway, that is my example of something of personal joy then allowing this particular moment to transform into something that you said is sort of bigger and instant. I actually think we have time for one more question. Someone's got a mic there. Wags, you're my favorite character on the show. Thank you. Awesome. Um, what too. is your favorite line in the show I like to say? Because like, I'm just like your favorite line in the show. As, as Wags. I mean, that Tracy Lord's line was really super fun to say. And in fact, I said it so many times that the, and it was, it was sad that the, 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 um, the, the producers were there, the guys who had written this, the, the script that were there, and they were like, you gotta, you gotta just do one that's not so excited. <laughs> Bye. I see how excited you are by this line, but now just do one straight. So I just did it straight, and that's the take they used. The line? Bah, 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 Say the line. Bah, bah. Do you remember the line? Uh, you got to bring me back a Tracy Lord's idea, and for and if you don't, oh, Jesus, and if you don't know what that is, it's a barely legal, uh, a barely legal, something something brilliant cocksucker of an idea. Billions is on Sunday night at ten o'clock on Showtime. David Costable, everybody.